Hello, I'm Jesse Skellington with LARP Heroes, and I like to talk about uh, my experience here in the process of creating this Grey Lady Axe. Um, it's not totally done yet, I've got a battery that needs, still needs to be done, and we're going to do some airbrushing on this. But I want to take this opportunity to come and show with you guys the process of how I went ahead and built this, and the, the year-long progression that happened. Um, I had a character from a LARP uh, come to me and he was wanting just a simple axe. Uh, he was showing me an axe that he bought online that was falling apart. He had it taped together. It was really kind of humorous and very endearing. Um, and I said, sure, I can take that project on and I can do it in about four hours. Um, as we proceeded to talk a little bit further, uh, he was talking about an NPC that he was going to become a paladin of in the game. And my character had some interaction with that NPC as well as my interaction with the woman that plays the NPC out of it. So I really wanted to kind of bump up the angle of the Grey Lady Axe that he was waiting for this paladin. And my imagination started working on it, and this is what I came up with. So um, as I was been thinking about the Grey Lady Axe and was just kind of creating the image of what will be in my head, um, I had a particular um, album cover from a music CD that I really loved. And I was out in a dance club, and I met up with a gal who uh, we just started talking about things and she actually pulled out her sketchbook and started sketching what was in my head and we went through about three or four pictures and it just she captured what I had in my head perfectly um, we started looking at the shapes of the axe itself and as we went through that process I was actually taking pictures with my cell phone through Facebook and then texting it to the end client saying, what do you think of this? Do you like this? This is where we're going. This is how we're doing things. And he replied back instantly with his feedback. All three of us were there in the club at a random moment, at a random time, serendipitous happened, and poof, we had exactly the concept that we were looking for with the Grey Lady Axe and pretty darn close to what we're seeing here. So next up here, once I had gotten the drawing from the artist, um, it would take me to build it life-size. Um, here's a spearhead that I was working on. Um, it's a, a cereal box and it's nice sturdy material, really plentiful. I've got two kids, they eat a lot of cereal. So um, one of the key things that are going on here was if I drew this once um, and I didn't quite like it, I could cut and paste and build it out again. Uh, but this time with the Grey Lady, since I had a drawing from an artist, I wanted to put it into a vector-based graphic drawing tool and then to be able to push those um, vectors around in such a way that I really get finite control over it. And this time I was really inspired and I thought, gosh darn it, it's really going to be a good process to move forward on, especially if I want to make different versions of the axe. So now that I've got um, this great image, I've got it processed in a vector-based graphics tool on my computer. Now what I'm able to do for future is to be able to cut chunks of this and then move it with other chunks of other things that I've designed and therefore I can just go to my printer, hit print, and I've got my template, I can easily go out, transfer it to foam, and I'm done. So the concept being is that I'm going to take this small image and turn it into a vector base graphic. But I have no real way, because it's in the computer, uh, of really scaling it properly. So then I got back together with the artist, met her at her house, and we ended up making a life-size drawing of exactly to scale the Grey Lady Axe. I knew it had two elements. One would be the axe blade itself, right here, and then the Grey Lady herself. So that's why we went ahead and drew a full-size uh, version and then had that scanned in at Kinko's. So now that I've got it um, scanned in life-size uh, in the computer, I have it traced in the computer, um, and I can just go down to Costco and get an oversized printing or Kinko's and get an oversized printing and then just easily transfer it to the foam. But at around this time uh, in this process, I met up with Richard down at the Soto Maker Space here in Seattle. Um, he wanted to work with me and collaborate as an artist to use their lives, their equipment. He's a really fabulous technician and he gave me the opportunity to work with him as an artist. And so I took the vector based graphics and then took it down to Richard and we were able to process it in such a way that we used his laser cutter and CNC router and um, was able to let those computers do the process for us. And the advantage of that is that now I have an actual um, same cut 
every time. Um, so she got cut the same way and the axe blade got cut the same way. And that's something I can't do by hand with just a template. There's always just a little bit of variant and I usually end up sanding that out in the end and expecting that. But this one was just so much easier. Everything just registered ever so nicely together. So um, the client had been viewing me over through Facebook and had seen a project I did, this kukri for another client. It had some basic LED lights in it. Um, I went down to Joanne Fabrics and got in their floral section, the wedding section, these really cool little simple lights, about five bucks. And, you know, they look really good on the weapon. Um, and then also, I had done this hobby horse over here. And this one here proved to be a bit of a challenge because red LEDs and white LEDs don't play well together. That's a different story at a different time. So, but you can see here, um, this bad boy here lights up and it's always a really good time. So when the client saw this, and we had perceived kind of talking back and forth um, yeah. that he wanted to have some some lights in this as well and I really agreed with him so um, for some extra money on his part uh, we were just going to simply go with the the Joanne Fabrics LED lights um, I ended up throwing that off to the side because working with Richard down at Soda Makerspace he has access to LEDs and circuit boards that he custom designs himself and writes customized programs for him. So we actually um, ended up producing this. This has, gosh, um, four modes of animation in the lights. It has six or seven colors that can be applied to it, one of which is rainbow, which is really cool. So we're really able to take that LED and sip it up a notch and have it bright as hell. So in the original concept with um, the artist I was working with for doing the drawing, um, she really wanted to sculpt the gray lady, and I was really excited about working with her on that project as well. Um, except for she ended up getting busy working on other projects and wasn't available for me. So I was kind of like, you know, we had this wonderful flat silhouette to be placed on the axe, and I was really, was happy with that, but not really really what we had originally visioned. Um, I out um, in another artisan, and um, she was able to come on board, and she ended up sculpting the Grey Lady, as we see here with the Dremel, and um, did a fantastic, amazing job with this. I really liked her technique of, um, she used uh, a Sharpie to kind of like mark out the areas that she would be grinding away, and uh, the result just proves to be fantastic and a lot of flow in the design of having it sculpted. So now that we've got the sculpting process down, everything's in vector base, we've got laser cutted, the next step here is to paint it. Uh, we really wanted to be able to hit this in such a way that it looked like metal um, and that the light would shine through. So to do this, um, we ended up just using just your normal model paints that you can get at your store at Enamel. And then we got clear plastic dip, which comes in a kit or you can get it individually on its own. The kit will give you some more model paints to be put inside that'll pigment it, but it's just the basic ones. Um, for LARPing, metals are really kind of key for me. So adding this to this, and we just kind of experimented in um, the amount we would put in, uh, allows us, when this is turned off, uh, it's here. When this is turned off, it looks just metal, and it looks fantastic. But since we used the clear plastic dip, along with the paint and we kind of play with the opacities and the brush strokes that allows us once again to come in and allow that light to come from the LEDs from the inside out. One of the things I like to talk about here is the foam around the handle. Um, pretty unique in this respect. Um, I ended up taking flat Y20 foam and then I ended up putting it into a PVC pipe plastic uh, tube and what I ended up doing is cutting the tube into um, roughly two-thirds and cutting off that top um, and then using that top once again to smash the foam to making the foam round. Um, it was a kind of awkward at first but I think over time it's going to prove to be very beneficial. Um, so this Y20 foam started out flat. I ended up shaving the ends of it to a 45 and then once that was done I put snapped the foam inside the PVC pipe tubing I put down the DAP wood glue 
uh, which is contact cement, uh, onto the flat foam, and then I snapped it into the PVC pipe, and then I put DAP contact cement once again on the um, the core itself and snapped that into place, and then I took the part of the PVC pipe that's on top and smash that over the top to make it all nice and round. Um, that's what I ended up using for the shaft and it really turned out to be good. So putting in the wood grain into the handle, we ended up using the wood burning tool uh, that I got from Harbor Freight, a whopping $9. Great deal. Um, one of the things I was reading online is something, the smoke itself is toxic to you, so wear appropriate gear to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to something you shouldn't be exposed to. Burning the foam isn't really not good for you, but you know, I always view it as a short-term thing, so uh, if I was doing it over long-term, most certainly I'd be gearing up. And then also uh, making the gear look cool would be fun too. But on this particular note, um, we had to use the wood carving tool to cut in the wood grain into the handle all the way to the end. Um, and that really proved to be fantastic and it gave us great results. This axe has a computer chip inside that controls all the LED lights and there's 61 uh, individual LED lights. Uh, this handles the animation and it also handles the color changes. Let me introduce you to some of those now. Um, the on and off switch for the um, LEDs are right here. I've got it nice and hidden. Um, one of the things here if you press, uh, I have two switches. Um, if I press one, it'll actually change modes. And you go from, so this is now um, in sparkle mode. And then if I go into the next mode, um, this is pulse mode. Um, and then let me change the next mode. So this one here is where it's on. This has a motion detector inside, um, so as we're changing modes, um, this is blinky mode, and then there's going to be, um, this one here is hit detection, so it just turns on when it detects a hit. And this one here is strobe mode, and when it gets hit, it goes a little bit faster. And this one here is sparkle mode. And when it gets hit, it goes to um, full opacity. And this, of course, is rainbow mode. And what's nice about rainbow mode is you'll see that if you chase the red and perhaps here the blue, it just kind of uh, moves around in color so you have a slight animation. And there's no real hit detection uh, in this particular animation. And again, sparkle mode, and when you hit, it goes to full opacity. And then the button down below is strictly for color. And we have green, now we have blue, we have purple, we have red, back to green, and then back to blue. And that's the LED modes that we have programmed into the act so far. Uh, with the axe, uh, if you see some of the raw images of the axe, the handle is actually a charcoal gray, and the axe head is white foam. Uh, both are white 20, just the charcoal gray has got a color added to it. Um, I chose the white foam in the regards that I would be able to put LED lights into the foam and then illuminate it. Um, and that really turned out to be very successful. And um, adding in the chip and the wiring uh, proved to be uh, an easy task. One of the things I want to talk about here is the battery. Um, I originally had it placed right here um, and I had plans of another piece of foam that was going to be done out of Y40, a denser foam. And I was going to be able to just pluck this guy out, you're going to have the battery in your hand, you can put it on the charger, and then once it's done charging, put it back in and kind of snap it into place and the way the foam would hold on to it. The problem was is that this foam itself started separating and um, not staying close and stuck next to each other, which was completely annoying. I don't know why I did, but I just completely abandoned it. 
put the, the block of foam in, glued it in, and called it done. Um, I ended up extending the uh, Grey Lady dress here up and over, and inside this is hidden a very long um, battery. And I originally had it so that you'd go in with a pair of pliers, grab from down below, and then just pull the battery out, and then charge it. But it turns out that um, you're able to take the battery, flip it around, stick it inside, and then I can grab the wires out from here, pull them out, and then just plug them into a USB device for charging, and then you're on your way to charge that battery. That way everything stays self-contained and won't come out during battle. The thing I like to talk about now is airbrushing. Um, it's the last thing that we ended up adding to this axe, um, and it went as smooth and as perfect as I had hoped to be. Um, we went in and just hit just light shading um, around the Grey Lady, around the backside here. It makes it feel like it really lives in the world now um, and not so cartoonish. Um, I was really pleased with it. I ended up picking up my airbrush down at Harbor Freight with my 20% off coupon. It really turned out to be a um, very frugal way of going um, and most satisfying. My friend Kim uh, from Oregon came up and she did the work on the airbrushing and it was um, exactly what I had hoped it to turn out to be. I hope you've learned a lot um, throughout this great adventure. I know I have. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me on Facebook at Jesse Skellington. Uh, you can also find me at LarpHeroes.com. Once again, thank you for watching. Um, in the, in the axe here, uh, uh, what, okay.